AMD completely shot their own launch in the foot with their marketing claims leading up to it. They claimed up to 1.7 times faster, and at the launch it was very prominently featured. 1.7 times faster, up to. So it was very much like 1.7 times faster. That stuck out in people's minds. Now, if you did look at the rest of their marketing slides, you did see, okay, 1.5 times faster, so 1.5 to 1.7 times faster than their 6950 XT. And if you actually run those numbers compared to, okay, the 6950 XT versus something like a 4080. Well, the 4080 is not 1.5 to 1.7 times faster. So that means then the 7900 XTX by extension should be significantly faster than an RTX 4080. However, the actual reviews are out and this is just not the case. So if we pull up a variety of reviews, like here's TechSpot, you can see that uh, the 7900 XTX is averaging 113 frames per second, whereas the 6950 XT is averaging 84 frames per second, and that's really only about 35% faster. We can see this confirmed in other results. Like if we look at Tom's hardware, we're seeing 90 frames per second versus 64.3 frames per second. Again, um, not a 50 to 70% lead uh, from one to the other, although it is a significant lead. We're seeing other similar results from other reviewers. The point is, um, I think people would have had a different reaction to this launch had we not seen 1.7 prominently featured for the performance versus the 6950 XT at 4K. Now, granted, it does depend on which game you test, and it's not that there aren't games where it does see this kind of a gain. Now, why did AMD do this? I mean, for one thing, it did get them tons of positive press. People were very, very excited for the 7900 XTX. It's some of the most positive press coverage I'd seen of AMD GPUs, at least since I've been uh, paying attention to it. It. So it did gain them a lot of marketing value, which is now being tampered by the fact that reviews have to respond to that. Now, it's possible that AMD, I mean, remember when these, uh, when these claims were made was a while ago. Maybe they were hoping that they would get drivers to a point where this would be more typical performance rather than outlier performance, and then were unable to do so. Now, if that's the case, maybe it is possible that through drivers updates in the future, we could see this become more of a typical result rather than an outlying positive result, but we cannot count on that. You're buying the performance you have now, and if it improves over time, great, but you should never bank on that for sure happening. It might not. They might have tapped out. This might be as good as it gets. Now, if this is as good as it gets, where does that put you? Is it still good, even if it's disappointing? So in this case, we now have to think about pricing, and also two GPUs launched today, not just one. There's a 7900 XT and a 7900 XTX, and the problem here is that they're only $100 apart in pricing, whereas um, the performance difference here is more significant than that. So I think it clearly makes the 7900 XTX the more interesting of the two. Now, if we focus in on the 7900 XTX at $1,000, okay, is that a good deal? Should you try to rush out and buy one tomorrow morning? If you're watching this at the time of filming, these will go on sale tomorrow morning. Well, that really depends on you and your specific circumstances, because here's the thing, everybody's going to do different things with their graphics cards. One thing I'll tell you as far as grabbing a, a highlight here, if you are someone who basically just plays Modern Warfare 2 or Warzone 2, then honestly, go get yourself a 7900 XTX immediately, because this game in general very much seems to favor AMD hardware. But uh, all the reviewers uh, I watched uh, saw that the 7900 XTX was giving the RTX 4090 a run for its money in this game. And some reviews, like the TechSpot review here, actually have the 7900 XTX ahead of the RTX 4090 in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And I understand that for a lot of people, Warzone 2 is more important there. 
but in reality, it's it's running on the same engine. So g GPUs that are performing better in the in the COD War Modern Warfare 2 benchmark are also going to be performing better in Warzone 2. Although keep in mind that people who are playing extremely competitively are likely actually turning down their graphic settings to a point where they're CPU limited, in which case your CPU becomes more important and then does it matter that much anyway. But I will say this was a big standout. So we can see the 7900XDX really, really give the 4090 a run for its money, but only in this circumstance. So now, do I think this would ever become typical if they had perfect drivers? No, because this is a game where we're seeing the AMD GPUs in general performing above where they usually do. For example, usually a 6950 uh, XT is fairly comparable to a 3090 Ti. When you're not ray tracing, they win some and they lose some, but here it has a pretty noticeable lead. So that's atypical performance for Nvidia versus AMD. But I did want to highlight, some people just play one competitive game, and if that's you, grab yourself this GPU. Now, if you're somebody who does a lot of ray tracing, then we would want to look at ray tracing performance. Now, some reviewers did a lot of ray tracing testing and I plan on doing a lot of ray tracing testing when I get one of these. By now, you've probably realized, wait a second, he doesn't have a 7900 XTX, does he? No, I don't. And I've mentioned this in previous videos on my channel and I did not intend you to think this video was my 7900 XTX review. Think of this more of a meta analysis of reviews along with my opinions of what I'm seeing. So basically I have read and watched tons of reviews for hours today, and now I'm giving you my thoughts. Now, will I get a 7900 XTX and do my head-to-head -head comparisons? Absolutely. And it's possible I will even get a review sample of either the XT or the XTX. And in fact, if I ha if get a phone call and end the video early, I'm actually expecting a call from someone at AMD regarding review samples. But anyway, <laughs> basically they tried to get me one, they got really busy, it kind of fell and fell through, and whatever. Hopefully for the future I'll be on their list in time. Anyway, relative ray tracing performance from Tech Power Up um, is showing like a 16% lead for the 4080 versus the 7900 XTX. However, um, you know, and, and actually putting it pretty close to a 3090 Ti. Also, I'll mention that, you know, when I predicted the performance of the 7900 XTX versus, um, you know, the 4080 and the 3000 series and all that based on AMD's marketing claims, I predicted it would probably be similar ray tracing performance to a 3090 or 3090 Ti, depending on the game. That does look like it is the case. Now, depending on which games you benchmark, this result can go all over the place. So I do recommend you take a look at individual game performance and graphic settings and all of that, because ray tracing cannot be boiled down to a single number. So uh, AMD was claiming some pretty big ray tracing bumps and they actually did get it to the point where I think basically if you think about it like this, the 7900 XTX is going to deliver you similar ray tracing performance to Nvidia's previous high-end GPUs, ranging from a 3080 to a 3090 Ti in ray tracing performance depending on the specific game, and significantly better than their previous generation. However, that means it's, uh, it's a big fall off compared to its uh, rasterized performance. In rasterized, in other words, non-ray tracing performance, um, most reviews are having the 7900 XTX, um, you know, neck and neck with the RTX 4080. Uh, here at uh, TechSpot, we're seeing something like a 4% advantage for the 7900 XTX. Uh, at Tom's Hardware, we're seeing, again, just a, a few single digit percentage uh, lead for the 7900 XTX over the 4080. Um, at uh, Tech Power Up, uh, we're once again seeing uh, just a few percent difference between the 7900 XTX and the um, and the 4080. Uh, they have a helpful breakdown here where you can see it game by game, and in general, there's a large number of games where you're around 5% plus or minus, which uh, would be extremely difficult to tell the difference in person without running a frame rate counter. And then there's a few outliers. It does look like the outliers are he uh, are more frequent for AMD, but again, it's, it's impossible to get a sample size of every possible game. So let me, let me put it like this. Here's, 
when you buy a graphics card, you're not actually comparing the two GPUs. You're not gonna have two different GPUs side by side. But imagine the experience you would get buying a 7900 XTX versus buying an RTX 4080. I think in the vast majority of situations, if you're playing a game that does not have ray tracing, you would usually not be able to tell which GPU you purchased. In which case, because a 7900 XTX costs less money than an RTX 4080, most of the time, you would feel like you got the better deal if you bought the 7900 XTX. However, if you're playing a game with ray tracing enabled, especially with heavier duty ray tracing settings, you would very much notice the difference between the GPUs. It would be a noticeably smoother ray tracing experience on the RTX 4080. In which case, you could argue that then the higher price for the 4080 feels justified. However, I'm gonna take a completely different approach to answering this question, and I'm gonna say that the 7900 XTX is overpriced, and so is the RTX 4080. In other words, I think that the 4080 should cost more than the 7900 XTX, because in rasterized performance, the gap is small enough and sure, maybe driver updates in the future will change this, but currently, the gap in performance between the 7900 XTX and the 4080 in rasterized performance is close enough to a tie that if you were just judging on rasterized performance, I think they should cost the same. And maybe the 7900 XTX could justify costing a little bit more. But in ray tracing performance, it's a larger gap between the two and that favors the 4080, which justifies a higher price for the 4080. And that's if all you care about is gaming. If you also care about productivity workloads, I didn't pull up any of those to show here, but I've, I, like I said, I've read a ton of reviews today, watched a lot of reviews today. In the majority of uh, productivity applications, uh, AMD is either similar in performance or more frequently worse because software favors the market leader. If NVIDIA has a larger market share, people who create software, it makes sense for them to program to optimize for the GPU that more people have, right? That just makes sense. So in those productivity applications, again, NVIDIA can justify a higher price tag. And then with things like upscaling, FSR 2.1, 2.2, they're getting very close to DLSS, but I would still consider DLSS a little bit better. Also, DLSS 3 actually exists now and is available in games that you might play, although not very many of them. And FSR 3 is just a, we hope it's okay when it eventually comes out in the future. Now, if you primarily play multiplayer games where you care about latency, then DLSS 3 doesn't really do anything for you. But I used it when I played Plague Tale Requiem. It helped me in a CPU limited situation where other things couldn't. It made gameplay look and feel smoother and the latency was irrelevant in a slow paced game like that. So DLSS 3 is not something to be completely ignored. In other words, what I'm saying here is the RTX 4080 should cost more than a Radeon 7900 XTX, but an RTX 4080 should not cost $1,200. That's an insultingly high price. I think the 4080 makes more sense at the $999 price point, or actually the $899 price point, okay? <laughs> which means that I think the 7900 XTX, which is a 4080 competitor, which is similar in rasterized performance, maybe slightly better, and loses noticeably in ray tracing. In other words, guys, compare this to last generation with the 3080 and the 6800 XT. I think people are being thrown off because the 7900 XTX is called a 7900 XTX. But if you look at it relative to Nvidia's lineup and naming schemes, this is a 6800 XT, but you know, the next generation of that versus the 4080. In, in other words, the 6800 XT versus the 3080 was very close in rasterized performance and then a noticeable loss for AMD in ray tracing performance. And they priced them about the same. AMD was undercutting them a bit, but then the actual market, the prices people are actually willing to pay has dictated that the 6800 XT costs significantly less than a 3080. That's what people are actually willing to pay. And that's where I'm gonna double down and say, guys, 
6800 XTs are still popping up for around $550. And so if you're looking for value, look at that, the 6800 XT. And then look at pricing of this versus that. It's just not there, guys, and especially the 7900 XT. This is not enough better than AMD's previous generation offerings in the current market to justify a $900 price point, nor is it uh, close enough in this, to the 7900 XTX in performance to justify this. So in other words, I think Nvidia's pricing needs to come down to around the $1,000 to $900 price point on the 4080, and I think the 7900 XTX should cost less than that by at least one to $200. And I think that that is what will happen, just not on launch day. I think that once the 3000 series GPUs sell out for Nvidia, and once the 6000 series GPUs are selling out for AMD, so they only need to sell their current generation, what's going, going to happen is eventually AMD will drop these prices because they just, they'll be able to sell some of these at these prices day one. They absolutely will. They might even sell out. Although there's rumors that AMD has 200,000 of these GPUs on the way, although we don't know how much they're split here because I think the XTX, at, at current pricing, the XTX makes a lot more sense than the XT. So if they mostly ship XTs, that's gonna be a hard sell. If they mostly ship XTXs, I, I think that's a little easier to justify. Anyway, the point is, I think that maybe initial sellout, but as we go into next year, barring some other crypto craze or something like that, the market will dictate pricing. AMD will have to be a more value-oriented card. And while it currently is cheaper than Nvidia, Nvidia's 4080 is priced too high, and I think it does need to come down. And as it comes down, the 7900 series needs to come down. And I think that's where we'll end up, where I think that eventually this will cost less and the 7900 XT will cost significantly less than $900. And if they can't do that, then we are truly living in a dark timeline for GPUs. So in summary, I think the 7900 XTX overall delivers very good performance if you're not that into ray tracing. And even if you are interested in ray tracing, 3090-ish ray tracing performance is by no means anything to laugh at. Up until the 4000 series, that was the best you could get. I think overall, this is a looks to be a very good graphics card, but I'm curious what the state of the drivers are and if performance will get better over time if those things get ironed out. Lots of question marks there. I think, like I said, if you're specifically interested in a game it performs extremely well in, um, like uh, I apparently lost the page, but uh, there we go, uh, Call of Duty Mar Modern Warfare 2 or Warzone 2, seems like a great deal. Um, if you're more interested on the ray tracing side of things, well, guys, I don't think there is a good deal right now. <laughs> so, and if you're looking for the best deals, on like 1440p gaming, something like that, if you can still spot a 6800 XT in that five to $600 range, I still think that's the best bang for the buck. If you're going for 4K gaming, it's looking like right now, there just aren't as great deals as we thought there was gonna be. People were excited for this price point when they thought it was gonna be 1.7 times faster than a 6950 XT, but it isn't. So this really isn't a terrible product, but, I think it's, it is a bit of a letdown and I would like to see prices come down. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and stay tuned to the channel, uh, tuned to the channel for some follow-up content. I will get these GPUs. I will do my usual head-to-head -head comparisons. I just don't have one yet. I'm like you guys, I gotta buy one or something or maybe I'll get that phone call from AMD and, and get a review sample, but who knows when. I hope all of you have an excellent day.